Hello everyone my name is Rugwad welcome to today's episode do we own our technology do we own our stuff this is a question we need to ask ourselves at first you may think of course we own our stuff and you are right sort of well there is a worrying trend where we are losing control of our devices for better security i wonder is it better that we own our stuff or is it better that not to own our stuff for security reasons let's start with hardware there is a growing movement called right to repair i wasn't aware of the right to repair movement because personally i didn't experience anything negative with official service centers but a lot of people around the world don't have positive experience in official service centers like being charged to change motherboards and cpu because the glass on the phone was broken the repair cost for some of them get so high that they might just buy a new product remember this is happening in official service centers of the companies they have incentive to push people into buying new products because it is much more profitable and the repair which which is what most people want happens to cost a lot where if you spend a little more you can just buy again new product is this a coincidence i don't think so so what about other repair shops you can get things repaired there for low cost right yes and no obviously independent repair shops are not motivated to push people into buying new products so they help you with repairs sometimes here's the thing most independent repair shops don't have access to official parts a lot of companies just restrict their part providers from selling their products or selling their parts to independent repair shops they want to increase the profit margins by reducing the order for parts and saving money on their purchase of those parts because the order for those parts by hardware companies are so big it makes sense it makes business sense for those part providers to go along with the demand of those company to not sell those parts to independent repair shops this is called cutting margins in the supply chain sometimes independent repairs are not able to perform quality repairs because of the lack of the official parts sometimes they have to buy cheaper not as high quality parts because they don't have official high quality parts if something goes wrong with the independent repair then official service centers may charge you more for voiding warranty of the product of course the responsibility falls on the customer the device owner when it comes to a warranty warranties help you with the repair if device is not damaged in certain conditions but it definitely discourages independent repair sometimes companies just refuse to repair products even when customers are ready to pay full price for repairs as the warranty was voided through unofficial modifications made to the device so if a customer makes a modification or repair a product through a third party and it goes wrong they have no choice other than buying a new product even though it was easily repairable by changing a few parts just because official service centers refuse to repair that product this just feels wrong you know now why companies do this other than profits one reason is security a lot of times security is just bogus reason given especially when it comes to repair but sometimes deliberate modifications do compromise the security of the product this is especially true when it comes to the vehicles some people are stupid enough to sue the company after those people modified their products and those products stop working so instead of dealing with individual cases it is simple and efficient for the company to create product repair policy to discourage potentially security compromising modifications of course eventually that policy extends to independent repairs i had to deal with this when i had a problem with the gears of my bicycle a few years ago I repaired gears of my bicycle through a small repair shop but the issue came up again so I went to the official repair shop the official repair shop forced me to change a bunch of things just to fix a small issue it's funny how many of those companies are advertise about how great their products are for the environment they talk about things like how their products are made from recycled materials not manufacturing the products with materials that are harmful for the environment etc but they indirectly ris- discourage repair of their products and push their customers to buy new products if you talk to environmentalists they will tell you about the 3 r's of consumption of goods you may have learned this in your school reduce reuse and recycle even though repair starts with r and isn't included in the 3 r's repairing products helps reducing and promotes reusing So in conclusion when it comes to the hardware I'm 100% on the side of device ownership and right to repair 
but there's this unfortunate trend where we're slowly losing ownership of our devices what about software though well when it comes to software i have conflicting opinions i'm going to divide the software section into two parts operating systems and other software in operating system there are two approaches when it comes to security walled garden approach free approach freedom approach the walled garden approach is used by iphone and ipad that is ios and ipad os the walled garden approach is best suited for people who are not used to the world of software like kids and elderly this approach helps with security because you are not downloading software from shady sources companies that make the operating system also make and maintain the app store they usually have multiple security checks to make sure the software that will be available to download via the app store does not have any malicious software like viruses malware ransomware etc this approach lifts a huge burden placed on users that some of them like kids and elderly may not be able to handle the walled garden approach also takes care of software updates even for advanced users this helps a lot this walled garden approach is used by apple on their iphones and ipads you cannot install software from anywhere other than apple app store on your iphone and ipad so what are the disadvantages of this walled garden approach well if you disagree with apple's terms and conditions you st- still cannot reach your customers even if customers wants to use your software and your software does not have any malicious code for example fortnite situation on iphone epic games the maker of fortnite didn't want to comply with apple's terms and conditions when it comes to the payments in the game fortnite so apple removed fortnite from the apple app store so if you played fortnite and you are an iphone user you have to choose whether you want fortnite or you want the iphone despite fortnite not having any security issues that's one major major disadvantage of this walled garden approach another example is cloud gaming google launched cloud gaming service called stadia which you can use to play high quality games on any device mobile laptops computers or tvs instead of downloading games you're streaming them like netflix or youtube or spotify microsoft launched similar service called x cloud where people can play xbox and pc games Sony launched a similar service to play PlayStation games on any devices but Apple put strict conditions on these game streaming services Apple wanted to basically make these companies split game streaming into individual apps that you have to download to stream a single game I don't know why Apple did that for games even though they allowed other streaming services in just single app Imagine if they forced Netflix or Disney Plus to put shows and movies into their own separate apps where you have to download an app just for one movie or just for for one tv show anyway if you wanted to use these game streaming services on your iphone you can't because of apple's strict terms and conditions that allow other streaming content but want to individually evaluate each game when it comes to game streaming the other approach is freedom approach the wild west approach this approach obviously has dangers malicious software this approach is used by windows you just search something on the web and you download the software of course the windows has a lot of malicious software like viruses malware and ransomware so what do i think i think the best approach is the one taken by google on android sure android has more malware than iphone google is not as strict as apple when it comes to security checkups for app store google play store probably have or had in the past more viruses and malware than apple's app store because of loose policies of google play store about 70 80% of smartphones in the world use android so there are many reasons for android having more viruses than iphone but when it comes to the wall garden versus freedom approach android has both all android phones come with wall garden approach but if you are tech savvy and if you are willing to accept those risks you can go to settings or if your android phone and turn on the option to install apps outside the play store every time you install an app from outside the play store it will still ask you do you want to install this app so google takes advantage of both the walled garden approach and the freedom approach i think iphones and ipads should allow apps outside the app store if user chooses to do so same thing with windows they should start with the walled garden approach but they should allow the users download and use apps from other sources than the app store so what about other software let's go back in time time when we used to buy discs for everything movies albums software as long as discs were safe all those things were available to us 
we had to screw up those CDs and DVDs in order to lose our digital collection. Of course, they took some space both physically as well as digitally. Some companies didn't give out software updates. What you bought was what you got. Some companies gave software updates but no software up upgrades. Think antivirus up software. You got software updates but you had to buy a new version every year. Think Adobe software. There were different versions of Photoshop. Photoshop 7, Photoshop CS2, etc. On the plus side, you pay once, you have it for a long time. On the negative side, you couldn't upgrade to new version without paying. So if there was some shiny new feature, feature in the latest version, you had to buy that software again. Now we enter dark ages. The dark ages of SaaS and subscription services in general. What is SaaS? Software as a service. On the bright side, you always have access to latest version. So you can get those shiny new features if you can afford to pay the monthly fee. But if you miss one payment, the software gets locked. Again, I'm talking about you, Adobe. <laughs> Adobe. <laughs> Another thing that got in the dark ages is subscription service business model for content. Now in the beginning, subscription business model was nice because it was just Netflix. All TV shows and movies were available on Netflix. But as Netflix became most, more mainstream, it became multi hundred billion dollar business. So others thought, why have Netflix as a middleman to reach our audience when we can start our own subscription service? Netflix knew this would happen eventually. So it started with the shows like House of Cards, Stranger Things, etc. Disney, the mouse giant, was the wrecking ball because they acquired ESPN, Pixar, Lucasfilm and Marvel in last two decades. So they started their own service, Disney+. Plus. Two of the most popular shows on Netflix, The Office and Friends, were only licensed by Netflix. Their owners, Comcast and Warner Media, stopped licensing these shows to Netflix and started their own streaming services and put Office and Friends as exclusives on Peacock and HBO Max respectively. So before, we paid just for Netflix. Now we have to pay the same amount for Netflix, but also additional fees for Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, etc. Because of this, if you bought movies, documentaries on iTunes, Prime Video or Google Play in the past, you cannot watch them now because of licensing issues Hollywood Studios might have with Google Apple or Amazon. Whereas if you had purchased discs for those movies and documentaries, you can still watch that content without getting a new subscription service. Imagine losing access to the content that you bought because of licensing issues. So these are the dark times we have when it comes to owning software and content. On the bright side, one area where we have experienced the good side of subscription services business model without the downside is music. Of course, there were attempts by artists and Apple to boycott Spotify. I think there was a Taylor Swift album which was released as exclusive on Apple Music, I think. But eventually that album was available everywhere. Same for Adele and Coldplay. Now I use YouTube music because I'm more on YouTube and listening to music sometimes. YouTube music. So YouTube music which lacks some of the features of Spotify and Apple Music works for me since it comes with YouTube Premium. But the point is, unlike movies and TV shows, Music is not going through the dark times. Only major music store before music streaming became mainstream was iTunes. And I think Apple allows iTunes customer to still listen to music they had purchased in the past since Apple also owns Apple Music. So you can still play your music and you don't have to subscribe to multiple music streaming services. At least for now. Spotify is trying exclusives models with podcasts, acquiring Joe Rogan's podcast for reportedly more than hundred million dollars. Why do you think I started a podcast? But after looking at the comments on Joe Rogan's socials, I'm not sure if exclusives model is working out for Spotify. So what is my ideal utopian vision for software and digital content? Well, I like the dual model of iTunes and Apple Music. I'm not sure if you can still purchase latest albums or only listen to music that you have previously purchased. But I'm all for dual model of buying and or streaming sub subscription service. Microsoft has this model for the Office products where you can buy Office 2019 or subscribe to Microsoft 365 and get Office with continuous upgrades and 1 terabyte of cloud storage. I think Microsoft going to stop with Office versions and continue with Office 365. Sad. But but I'm all for this dual model of buying or subscribing. I'm looking at you Adobe. So do we own our stuff? Right now we somewhat have ownership of our stuff. But I see a worrying trend that we are slowly losing ownership over our things. I think we need to talk more about this if you are just as concerned about this as I am. So feel free to share this with other people who don't know about all this and I'll see you very soon.